Library. I am here with Ellie Coleman, who's the founder of Coleman and Kravis Associates, a world-renowned firm that redefines home interiors. Born and raised in Brooklyn, fun fact, her family owns the Peter Luger Steakhouse. Ellie went to Barnard and Columbia Graduate School before starting her business later in life. She has co-authored several books, including Decorating Masterclass, Home and Kravis Way, Detailed Interior, Decorating a Close to Home and Kravis, and her latest from Classic to Contemporary. Mother of three grown children, including the hit theater producer Trip Coleman, Ellie has decorated homes from Miami and Texas to Hawaii. Thank you, Zibby. Lovely introduction. <laughs> so, my mom has been telling me, I know you're, you've been friends with both my parents for a long time. My mom has been telling me, louder, my mom has been telling me um, for years that you and Mrs. Kravis, or Petty Kravis, a long time ago had an idea for a screenplay and that you showed it to some producers and they said, why don't you guys just decorate instead? Any truth it, it's absolutely a true story. Hetty and I decided, because I'm a crazy movie nut, I go to the movies at least two or three times a week, and Hetty and I decided that we would write the story of her divorce from Henry Kravis, a banker that nobody had ever heard of 35 years ago. Of course, now people have heard of him. So we spent a year writing a screenplay. We bought books about how to write a screenplay, 120 pages, plot point one on page 30, plot point two on page 90. We spent a year writing this, what we thought was a wonderful warm story about the wife, submitted it to our dear friend Stanley Jaffe, who had just won an Academy Award for Kramer vs. Kramer. We went to his office, hoping that he would think we had some kernel of an idea that, that would make a really heartwarming story. Instead, he said it was the single worst screenplay he had ever ever read in his 30 years of being in business. And without skipping a beat, I said to him, Stanley, what am I going to do when I grow up? Because I'd already had five careers. And he said, you should be a decorator. And I'm like, what? And he said, I love both of your homes. I know you did them by yourselves. And I want to be your first client. So that was October 1st, 1984. And the rest is history. We started just the two of us. And now we have a firm with 18 people. And we work all over the country. And I'm very grateful to him because this is a lot more fun than writing. <laughs> wow. Much more fun. So I feel like it's everybody, every woman's dream to start a business with their best girlfriend. What was that like for you? Were there any, any negatives or was it just... Well, like it really was a very natural uh, continuation of our friendship. And I feel so lucky that when we started, and let me tell you, we knew nothing, absolutely nothing. Somebody would ask us a question, and we would say, could you give me a minute? And then we'd walk in the hall, and we'd say, we didn't know you should think about these things ahead of time. Red walls, no, yellow walls. And it was so supportive to have somebody that you love, that you figured something out with. So I feel so lucky we've done this with Hetty. And I would have, honestly, I would have never had the nerve, because I would have gone to school for 20 years before I even picked to fabric, but Hetty was was very instinctive and original about it. She just did it. I have this mental image of Hetty in my dad's apartment. I like walked in one afternoon, like long after I feel like it was ready, mm -hmm. and she was sitting in his in his living room smoking at his desk, smoking just, away, like, hanging. She looked like it was like a picture frozen in time. She was like gorgeous. Anyway, frozen um, in time because also used to have. I always remember Hetty saying every time we installed somebody's apartment, she would lean back and say, I just love our work. <laughs> That's what the client is supposed to say. <laughs> not, not the decorator. So. And then so sadly, um, Hetty Kravis passed away from lung cancer, and I know her daughter, KK, is raising money for lung cancer from the Cancer Research Foundation ever since. How did you cope with that personally and professionally? It was one of the biggest crises of my life. Hetty was diagnosed on February 2nd, I remember exactly, 21 years ago, and she was dead by April 2nd. Oh my God. So the only good part about it is that she suffered for a very short time rather than suffering for a long time. She'd obviously been sick, we just didn't know. She thought she had a back problem. Anyway, it was terrible. We had, um, by that point in our careers, we were not always working on the same job together, and I'll never forget this. We had, I mean, besides the personal loss, Remember, there was no email at that time, right? Yeah. So every morning, I would have my morning conversation with Hetty. My husband would be like, would you please get off the phone already? <laughs> but we would discuss not only what we're doing in work, but also life. And 
and so losing her as a best friend was terrible, terrible. But professionally, I was really out on my own because I remember the first time I went to this huge house we were doing in Greenwich. It was about 25,000 square feet, and I didn't know where each room was because it was so big. So I was walking around with the owner, and he said, well, now let's go to the library. And I was like, <laughs> waiting for him to walk there first because I was not going to walk in the right direction. So it was a double, double problem. But So when you, you obviously have recovered and come into your own as one of the preeminent designers really in the world at this point, what do you think is the most important thing in a room? Like if you had to, if you went into someone's room and it was hideous, what's the, like the biggest bang for your buck to pick people? Well, I, I agree with what you said to me before and that I think pain is absolutely the biggest. And it's really, if you just do it on a mathematical basis, if you add up the square footage of four walls compared to anything else in your house, a carpet, a chair, a piece, a curtain, the, the walls have the most impact. It's also the most cost-effective way to, to fix a room. Yep. So I'm always for pain. Yeah. Pain, is, pain is wonderful. Pain is wonderful. Do you have any decorating pet peeves? Like when you go into someone's house and you see them, they did a mess. A mess. mess. I think every house can be a thousand percent improved if somebody just organizes it. And we tell our clients, particularly, and it's very hard when you have young children, we, we often say to our clients, first of all, take everything off of every tabletop. Okay. And this is a very Japanese thing. And then you only put back what you think really enhances the environment. Because people tend to get house presents. You get an ashtray, from, in the old days, an ashtray plate from somebody. It stays there for the next 20 years. And, the, you know, the whole idea in Japan of the of the tokonoma, the art niche, where you only put out one artwork and one flower, you have to think about what's on every single surface. And to me, decluttering, everything looks better uncluttered. So you have to have a closet, which sometimes in New York you don't have a closet. But if you have a closet, it's a great thing to have. Yeah, I'm like constantly picking up. I feel like even if I can get the kids stuff behind a door, like even if yeah. it's a cabinet, Absolutely. Just like shove it in. Yeah. The drawers can be messy, but if I can't see it, right. then like I can go to sleep with it. I, I agree, because that's your sense of just the end. Thank you. kind of cohesion to your home yeah. and order, which is, there's nothing more beautiful. Yeah, I agree. So what do you think? I vote for the lamp as the most overpriced Okay, I can picture. give I give feel like lamps are, I'm like, what? How can this lamp be $600? Why is it so expensive? Because it's not 10000 Okay, so let me just talk about lamps for a minute. Every item in interior design has a good, better, best. It's just like clothing, and sometimes, you know, there's an antique Chinese vase that is going to cost $10,000. That's not for everybody. I, I went to CB2 the other day for a client, and I bought, for their kids' rooms, lamps with shades for $150. I was, like, so proud that I did that. <laughs> but it's just, it's just like the way we all shop for clothing. You can buy a blue blazer at H&M, or you can buy it at Laura Piano. Everything has a good, better, best. And I think the important thing is to evaluate its cars, too. You don't need to have a Mercedes. You have to look at everything as what are the parameters of the design, and is it important to you, and at what level you're going to jump in. I'm sorry. That's okay. That's fine. Thank you. Because most people do have a budget. You have to put it all together, and I'm a big advocate of doing one or two signature pieces always. And then the rest that's around it looks good just by proximity to the signature items. So that's my philosophy. Right. But not lamps, because CB2, I don't know if you've been there. I've been, I've been to the website like a billion times. Well, that's another thing. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm not... I've not I, been to the Okay, store. I like websites for finding out what's available, but I can't... I'm, an, I'm old school. I have to see it. When you see something, it's either better or worse than you expected. For example, we used to when we get the Sotheby's catalogs, we open them, we dog ear every page, and we say Mrs. X, Mrs. Y, and then we go to the sale, and maybe we like three things. Conversely, on the websites, if you're lucky enough to see it, there's more that you're going to like than you think from the site. So I'm advocating going out in the field. Yeah, I have to say, uh, Kyle and I thought that we could decorate our house in L.A. by ourselves, and we're like, we can do this whole thing, like Jonathan Adler and all these things, we just order it. Well, we had to like, start from scratch, like toss right. out entire rooms. It was mortifying and upsetting. And well, you know what? That's
that's why, thank God, people still need decorators because it's not only the scale, it's also the relationship of one thing to another that takes years to figure out. Yeah. So that's my thing. And you have a place in L.A. How exciting. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Wow. Yeah. How are you? Anyway, um, so you worked on these three books, all with Tracy. Yes, he's a big here and also at yeah. Others Day. Uh, what was it like to collaborate on a project like this? How did you even pick which houses to focus on? Well, that was actually easier than the first step of deciding we need to write a book. The first book was all about how you put a project together because I wasn't trained and I don't know why I figured out subliminally what the first step, second, third, whatever steps were in putting a project together. So we decided to write that and of our three books, that one sold the best and is still alive because people don't understand how logical and sequential what we do is. And I think that book really helped it. And then after that, it became a piece of cake to write these books. And we may have one more left. Oh, us. yeah? I don't know. Excellent. I don't know. And what about, like, what's on your wish list for you accomplished so much professionally already? Um, is there so anything you still want to get I, I have a huge wish. I really want to do a movie. Oh. I really want to do a movie. And I keep... No, Kyle is a movie producer. I didn't know that. Uh, <laughs> we have, as I say, we have to talk. <laughs> okay. Uh, I didn't know yeah, that. He's, uh, he has a movie uh, he's working on that's represented by CAA right now. And that's huge. A bunch of reality shows. So, um, oh anyway, my goodness. Well, you, well, you know, I have a son. A son is a director, and a son is also a filmmaker. So no, we well, need you're people. Anyway. No, 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 no. So if you're the producer, you need to hire these people, right? It's true. It's true. Networking. Here we go. <laughs> Networking. Authors, you heard it here yeah. first. <laughs> and you know, I saw your brother. Oh, yeah? So I saw him at the Venice Film Festival. I've seen him at all the film festivals. Oh, so yeah. I love seeing him. Oh, good. Well, thank you so much. Okay, for thank, on you, on thank you, Sydney. Thank you so much.